What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the Ask Assist P podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Williams. So this is a companion podcast to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk to those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made to the other side of proverbial firewall. And with me today, I have one of those people. So I have Dr. Joseph J. Burt Miller Jr., uh, who reached out, said he wanted to, uh, you know, talk to us, do a little uh, collaboration, maybe some synergy with some future projects that he has coming up. But uh, thank you for reaching out to us uh, for the show. And I just want to give you a chance to introduce yourself, give us a little bit of your background, your experience, uh, and then we'll go into your cybersecurity origin story and then take off from there. So without further ado, I give it to you. All right, thank you, I appreciate it. And um, like I said, um, my name is Dr. Joseph uh, J. Miller Jr. Um, first, I have to say that, you know, I've, I've been following your work for, for quite a while. Like I said, even when, the team had uh you had different team members so yeah that kind of just goes to show like how long i've been been following but yeah it's great work and i knew i, I just had to get on one day so this, this i greatly appreciate that yeah so so you're talking about uh shannon levon the, the original crew so we, the, the, band, the band is still together we did not break up <laughs> it's right. scheduling conflicts but everybody's a little busy right got family friends and that stuff so one of these days we'll get levon back on the show but i digress <laughs> good, good. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, I am from Mount Vernon, New York, money earning Mount Vernon. Um, coming up right after, um, I'd say right after high school, went right into the, the military. Um, went right into uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas Air, uh, Air Force. Uh, joined Air, Air Force. Force right after the military. Yes. There it is. Air power. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I um, spent four years in the Air Force, uh, you know, moved around a bit. Uh, during that time, I learned uh, my my trade was not IT or cyber. I, I don't, honestly, I don't think cyber was a real thing uh, back then. It was really just IT. Um, but I learned uh, HVAC, and that's heat and ventilation air conditioning. So I, I learned that trade while I was in. And then after that, after the four years, I uh, got into the government civil government civil service and um started at the VA hospital in New Jersey uh bounced around a bit I went to the Midwest in uh, Nebraska then came back to the East Coast um in Maryland worked at the the DOD Cyber Crime Center uh Homeland Security and currently where I am now with uh, the NSA awesome so with with you bringing up your your origins being an HVAC right um, it is surprisingly how adjacent that is to to IT and cyber in general, right? You always have Power Pro, you always have HVAC, like they're always an integral part, especially in the military, like it's out here in the in the civilian world as well. But in the military where we're deploying, right, like you get real tight with your HVAC guys because you need yeah. you need them or the equipment goes goes bad oh, quick. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So no, that's that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, I, don't, I don't know if you uh, remember uh, Shannon's origin story. So he was a, a, a jet mechanic. So right. again, right, like there's a, a lot of different avenues to get over here to, to doing the IT thing, to doing the cybersecurity thing. So people will always be surprised that a lot of us did not just start pure IT, which is awesome because you had that diversity of thought, that diversity of, of culture, all that good stuff. So that's exactly what we're here for, right? So that's awesome. Um, so you said that you started to work uh, at the Cyber Crime Center. Like, how did you get into that um, uh, career? Yeah. So, well, my my very first my very first uh, position as far as IT is concerned. Uh, didn't didn't start at the cyber crime center. Started at when I was at the VA. Um, gotcha. So, yes, while I was at the VA, I was still doing HVAC for about about five years or so. And during that time, I was studying for my bachelor's and um, my bachelor's in uh, computer information systems. And you know, I was just re really just motivated to uh, to transition to move out of it because you know during that time I was in my twenties. But I was kind of seeing the right on the wall with, you know, seeing the other guys in the shop coming in with all different types of ailments, limping and stuff like that. And I mean, and, I'll, you know, doing HVAC is a great trade. I don't, you know, I don't doubt it at all. I, I learned a lot. You also, you're learning pretty much three skills in one because not only you learn HVAC, you're learning um, electrical and plumbing. And especially as a homeowner, that those are great skills to have that, you know, you're able to do a lot of things on your own and you're very mechanically inclined. 
Um, but uh, like I said, when I saw like couple of my coworkers, you know, like I said, all these different type of ailments that that just really pushed me to say I need to get I need to move out of this and. Right. So I'm studying and, you know, studying every day. It was to the point where my, my supervisor, he, um, he was calling me professor. Cause I would, I would come to work with my book bag on and studying during lunch breaks and everything like that, because I was just, I was just that motivated. So, and also I was, I was applying, um, applying for a IT open, uh, open IT positions, uh, at the hospital. Um, it, it almost has a point where I almost gave up honestly, because, uh, it took me a while to to get in uh so it, i did i did feel a bit deflated you know because i was getting quite a few rejections and i started questioning myself like man am i you know good enough you know to do this or not but once i did finally get through once i finally broke through um i did appreciate it much more it made me appreciate it much more uh and i was i was really pretty much ready to go and and i give a lot of credit honestly to my my first supervisor <laughs> Um, who gave who gave me that chance? Um, and all throughout my career, I mean, now he's retired, but um, as I moved on, each step I, you know, each stop I've made, I've always kept up with him, let him know how I'm doing, and you know, the advice he always gave me is something I always kept with me. So, um, and and, that, and those are the things that I think it really shows. I think that lesson that taught me was that how important it is to have, you know, good mentors in your life. Um, Absolutely. And sometimes your, you know, your, your mentor could be, could be a supervisor, you know, it's a, you know, your boss doesn't have to be like this, this mean person or, you know, right uh, now, not to say that there aren't some of those out there. There, there definitely are. I've had my share of good and bad, but um, I think that's what really makes a leader, a, a true leader is one that could help, you know, not only, of course, you, you're responsible for your, the people that are that are under you, but you you also trying to develop them and, and get them to be get them to the next level and really fulfill their potential. So he was definitely the epitome of that, and um, I definitely I've always thanked him and gave him his flowers as as I always moved up and within my career because he he played a big part in that. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, 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 more than a few of my uh, previous supervisors have either been my mentors while I was, you know, still, uh, in uniform or, or became there that after, you know, I, um, I either left that station or I transitioned out. Right. So yeah, there, there's a lot to be said about that. And they don't necessarily have to be doing the things that you want to, uh, you do like, right. Like they don't have to be in cyber. They can just be really good at what they do and they can give you a good work ethic from there. Right. Um, hopefully you can't hear my dog bark in the background because she would oh. do that in the middle of this interview. <laughs> It's all good, <laughs> but no. So that's so that's awesome. So, um, uh, not to cut you off in the middle of your journey, right? So, you're going to school. You're you're learning the uh, the the trade while you already had your HVAC trade. Uh, you said a lot of those skills did uh, apply and did uh, help you to to transition into it. Um, when do you believe you made that jump from IT into cybersecurity, or uh, do you do both? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, so after I got my, so after I got into IT, working at the VA hospital, uh, spent like a year and a half, then moved uh, Midwest. I worked at the uh, the VA hospital out there in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I was supporting the research the research uh, department team, uh, providing uh, IT uh, support. Um, and then after that, moved on to the Air Force, uh, offered Air Force Base out there still in Nebraska. There, I served as a system admin. Um, I was there for about a year, and then came back to the East Coast, and and that's where I really, I think, that's where I moved into the, I guess, more official cybersecurity realm when gotcha. I worked at the DoD Cybercrime Center, you know, in Maryland. Um, definitely learned a lot. Spent at least a year and a half while I was there. Uh, great people I work with, uh, great leadership. Uh, a lot of people who I, you know, still keep in contact today. Um, then from there, I moved on to, uh, DHS, so Homeland Security in Virginia. Uh, now that was a bit different, uh, cause there I, I was working doing a biometrics. So in the, you know, biometrics, not necessarily cyber, um, but still a great, uh, uh still, that, that was still a learning process for me. Um, 
So I did that for about three years. And then my last two years, I served as an assistant project manager for one of our one of our big projects uh, during my tenure there at DHS. And then from that point on, I I came over to where I am today. I am currently serving as a, a cybersecurity engineer with uh, NSA. That's awesome. So you did mention, uh, you know, starting your bachelor's. Uh, what made you decide to continue to move up that track to to where now you have, you know, the the title, right, doctor? And so yeah. what made you progress to uh, to to that next level or several levels, right? So bachelor's, master's, doctorate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, what ba- bachelors, um, it took me longer than, than I guess maybe the typical route that someone would take to four years. It took me about six. Uh, cause I took, I took a break and, you know, I took like a semester off and then a semester turned to two and then it just oh, yeah. kind of compounded into like a yeah. year. So yeah. I've, I've, I've been there. I, yeah. <laughs> and I, my bachelor's was the longest out of all of right. <laughs> everything yeah. else. Yeah. Cause then I just, I said to myself, like, Yo, are you gonna finish this or what? So I, I went back and finished. Um, then I and and that's then when I pursued my master's, that's when I was um really having that interest within cybersecurity. I think cybersecurity um curriculums were starting to become more popular around that that period of time. Um, so that's when I pursued my master's in cybersecurity. Um, and during this, then after that, I finished and. When it came to the doctorate, now I was thinking about it, kind of went, you know, it was weighing on my mind, and and I was, I was like, man, I, I don't, I don't know if I should do it or not. And then, um, it it, it was crazy. I, I I spoke with my my grandmother, and she gave me, you know, very simple but effective advice. Um, it, she just she told me you, you don't finish anything you don't start, and. And like I said, very simple, but it resonated with me. I was like, because I feel if I didn't start it, then it, it was just going to torment my mind, you know, as as time goes on. Because like, man, if I had started, then I would have been done by now type of thing. So, yeah, I, I went ahead and did it. And um, a lot of people ask, you know, like why, why I started or, or a thing like that. And, you know, are you going to teach? And. A lot of people don't like the answer, but I tell them no. It's it's really just to see, it, it was really to prove to myself that I can do it. Um, so it wasn't say like a, you know in anticipation for a job or like I said to to teach. Not now. I definitely do want to teach, but uh, but that was not my motivation then. Gotcha. It, it was really just to see if I could do it and so you know go for that high uh, mark and achieve it. No, awesome. Yeah, and then uh, again, <clears throat> it, like you said, simple advice, but it's 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 plain. It's it's plain, right? Like, yeah, you won't finish it if you never start it. So I think right. that's a lot of people's issue is just the uh, the hesitation or procrastination to because if I start it, I have to finish it. That's right. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. so I, I, if if no one hears anything else today, that I think that's a really good word to to pass along with it is if you don't start, you'll never finish. It kind of resonates with me as well. There's com- some projects I've been looking at, right? 2023 has been a little rough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to line up 2024, but I'm just like, oh man, if I started, I have to finish it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there it is. But no, that's great. Like, but I'm not not going for my doctor anytime soon. So <laughs> that's hey, not going to happen. I don't <laughs> maybe know, man, maybe that, one that, day. But... <laughs> that Dr. Williams sounds good, man. It, it does, but... <laughs> Not, not in this part of my life, but no, that, that's awesome. So, um, so uh, with that, right? So you you made the transition, you pivoted careers, right? You took some of those transferable skills with you, which um, I always try to tell people like you're not starting over. Like a lot of people, are like, well, if I go to cyber, I have to start over. I have to start from the ground floor to a certain extent. But you always have those transferable skills, right? What are you currently doing? A lot of that applies over here as well, right? Because right. cyber is so so big right there's many different pockets you can fit in but above all if you're already professional somewhere doing something a lot of those apply a lot of those skills will apply with you when you when you come over so uh Absolutely. that's definitely good to see as well so uh we we talked about your your background your experience again go air force uh, I, yes. I love to see it I, I think we had more air force people on here than we had civilians so far there we go <laughs> to be honest with there you. we go it's, it's a, a <laughs> an awesome network um 
we talked about uh, kind of your some of your your motivations, right? You have your your mentor who uh, who, who pushed you through the process and you know was there for you whenever you have uh, a need or questions or you know just something to look look uh, look at to uh, to to build your base, your foundation. Talked about your your grandmother with uh, that that very sound advice, right? That uh, has led you to to do great things. Uh, what does the future hold for you? So, like, you have your your current job. I know you're trying to to probably grow in there and you know uh, ex expand. But what what's what's the the 50 meter target? And then we'll talk about the the 500 meter target down the down the road. So, what's what's next? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I say well, number one, I'm I'm always in a state of learning. So I even with everything that I've done up to this point, I never feel like I'm finished. I, or I never feel like I'm, you know, complete, you know, I'm always looking to learn, always looking to get better. Um, and, and also at this point in my life too, I, I've gotten, I've gotten into more mentoring, especially since I got the doctorate. I've, that's when I've really noticed more people were reaching out to me as opposed to me reaching out to people. Uh, so that was something new for me. Um, that I had to get used to, but, um, but no, it, it does feel good to give back, to help others because from, from my journey coming up, I've had a lot of people to help me along the way. So who, you know, you know, what type of person would I be to, to not do the same for others who are trying to make it. So, um, yeah, so I definitely do a lot of, uh, mentoring. Um, also too, a part of that, as part of that, that, you know, lifelong learner i'd say mentality that i have um part of it um i do have a a study hall it's called the drjj bmj uh study hall and i had that on discord and i started that back in 2021 um no, i'm sorry uh, started last year like early last year january last year um and just quick background i when i was still at dhs and i just got into my a project management role and I was trying to just learn everything I I was very new and I was you know getting into the meetings and everything like that and you know it just felt like a completely different language to me and I was like man I, I gotta I gotta get smarter on this so I pursued the PMP and um went through the boot camp and and if you know anything about boot camps you know it's like four or five days of like right. a ton of information. Fire, fire hose. <laughs> right. And expect you to take the exam right after. So I was like, well, I was not ready to take the exam. And um, so I tried studying my own, but just being honest with myself, I was not studying consistently for it to stick. So I, I knew I needed some sort of structure. And so that's why I, that's where I formed the, uh, uh, the study hall. And I did some recruiting on LinkedIn, just asking people, hey, like, you know, I'm studying for the PNP. Anyone else is, you know, could come join. Um, yeah, and it was like a handful of us who were studying. We were, we were pretty much grinding, man, like every night, you know, studying, taking practice exams together, doing questions. And we 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 were bombing. <laughs> we were bombing, man. We was getting like 30s and 40s. But um we 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 didn't let it discourage us. We kept we kept coming, we kept showing up kept working and eventually saw those grades start, you know, turn from thirties and forties to eighties and nineties. And it re it really started to stick. We started to learn the, um, the, the frameworks and everything like that. And, you know, when it came time to test, you know, we all passed, we all passed about target. Uh, and one of the members, uh, he was able to get a job with, uh, with Amazon and it was able to move, you know, awesome. move his family out and get a new house. So, so that's what I'm really proud of, man, because that just shows the the byproduct of what, um, just j just something very small. I I'd say, you know, uh, out of necessity, that really changed lives for, for people. So then I, you know, I was like, you know, I think there's something here. So I just kept going at it, and we we did we moved on to a next cert, kind of just same formula. Did make adjustments as I learned, um, because I well for one, I knew I I couldn't do it every day for each cert. So right. I did have to create a schedule, do some time blocking. Um, but it started to work, man. And then what started with like 10 members, um, we now have close to 800 members now. And we're offering like different certs. So like right now I'm leading the, the CISSP um, study group. Um, we have NetPlus, 
We've done uh, AWS previously. We're, we're getting ready to gear up to do pen tests. One of our members is going to lead in that. I'm very looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of things going on, and I definitely working on how I could really pivot that into into more, I guess, into a like more formal um, nonprofit uh, business where, you know, I guess I look at the uh, Jason Dion's and Professor Messers of the world and right. Um, I think that's that's a, a space me I, I want to get into. Definitely want to see more of us, people that look like me, look like us into into these spaces. Um so so that's something that really drives me as well, uh, to do that. Um That's an awesome initiative. So you, you said it's it's so it's your initials that are be, behind you. It's basically oh, yes. the uh, chat. So D R J J B M J. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got you. Okay. So I'll definitely have to get all the links from you so you can put it in the description as well. So people sure. can find that resource. That, that's awesome. Uh that you that you set it up. Um so okay, so uh, again, noble, noble accomplishment, right? So you you're doing your thing. You've you've uh you you've learned a lot, you're taking these transferable skills, you're you're now a mentor, uh, and you're setting people up for success. Um and then this could potentially turn into an enterprise as well, right? Like you said, a, a nonprofit, and that's the, like so. I, I said, give me the fifty meter target. So, what what is the five hundred meter target? <laughs> what's the what's the further down the line that you're you're kind of formulating now? Yeah, I am. Uh, well, n- another project. I'm, I'm always looking at different projects. I, I do I do love to collaborate, work with people. Um, so part of that too, one of the projects. I, I am working on a podcast of my own. Um, okay. And that's called the, uh, the Cyber Coffee Hour. And the way that got started. So I have to, and this is kind of giving those ties back to Mount Vernon, New York. Um, when I was still pursuing my doctorate, I was coming towards, coming close to the end. I was doing the... Um, the recruiting phase uh, for the data collection. And I was looking for, you know, members who I could interview as I was doing a qualitative uh, study. And uh, one, one of my best friends uh, growing up, I went to high school with, um, he, I, I, I had made mention that I was looking for people to, that I could interview. And then he told me about um, one of our, one of our friends, uh, Alfredo, uh, he's uh he does cyber and he's in, he's in the DMV area and I haven't spoken to him since graduation. So it's, it's been like years. So I was like, so I had no idea what he was doing, where he was, anything like that. And my, my friend who, 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 who was pretty much the plug for us, his name is Gibbs. Uh, so Gibbs, yeah, he, he put it out there and said, hold on, let me, let me call our friends though. Cause he's, he was still in contact with him. And, um, so we got together. He so Alfredo he agreed to uh, be uh, to be part of the study, and um, so we spoke. We we did the interview, and you know I had my my set questions that I needed to ask him, and uh, and I just noticed, man, like man, this is this is really going good. And so after we did the required questions I needed to do uh, for the study, I said, hey, man, like. This, this has been good uh, you know we should probably do like a podcast or something and he, and he was with it he was like yeah so I was like okay just put a pin on it after I finish this doctor I'm gonna come back I'm gonna circle back <laughs> so um so after I finished after I graduated I, I did you know kept my word came back said hey you know I'm all set you know do you still want to do this podcast thing and he was like yeah so yeah so we, we've been We've been working, you know, going through a lot. I mean, we still have things that we're still going through, but we we uh, we've been doing like a couple like uh, beta episodes just to, you know, make sure everything works out right. But um, gotcha. we're pretty much there. Um, so yeah, so like now, you know, logo everything. We have the episodes, a couple beta episodes out right now. Um, but yeah, it's called the uh, the Cyber Coffee Hour, and we and we want to definitely, um. I think it was important to for us to do that because for us, for our upbringing coming up, we, we didn't have a lot of people that looked like us doing what we're doing right now. Um, and, you know, we always get that question of like, you know, when we were kids, like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, policemen, firemen, 
nurse, doctor, right. what have you. But it was never, you know, cyber professional was not part of the equation. Um, and and also too, ju just what we were exposed to, that's just not what we could see, something right. that we could aspire to. So that's something I want to change. And I'm I'm very um intentional about showing my face, letting people know who I am and knowing where I'm from too. Um, because I want people, especially to, you know, people that coming from where I came from, being being able to know that, you know, they this is an option for them as well, you know. Or, or places like Mount Vernon, New York. It doesn't have to be specifically for Mount Vernon, but places like that, you know, neighborhoods like that, knowing that this is an option for them, that um, you shouldn't feel um, any sort of type of way. You you are worthy. You, you, you could do this type of work and don't let anyone try to tell you any different. Um, so that's my main, that's my big motivation and as to why we, we're doing it together and we want to give we want to have that platform for others, those who are up and coming in this field. And we want to make sure that, that they get some shine and get recognition and, and, um, you know, like I said, just let them know that they belong as well. No, absolutely. And that's a very noble cause. Uh, again, that's the reason for the platform, right? So the other side of the firewall kind of came from that, uh, again, like being spoiled in the military, right? It's a melting mm -hmm. pot. You see people of all nationalities, cultures, everything. Uh, and then I started talking to my friends who were on the outside. They were like, that's not that's not the way it goes down out here. <laughs> they were a very small population. So I started doing my research and I saw, like, yeah, only 7% at the time. Now it's nine and, yeah. and growing, right? Uh, we're, we're, we're making waves. So no, it's, it's good to see that there's other initiatives out there as well. Uh, not not just talking to you, but then when I talked to uh, Aisha Holland, Chelsea Pierre, uh, 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 Kenneth, oh man, I can't remember the name. It's, uh, it caught me at the the uh, flat foot. I can't remember his last name. It'll come back to me. But yeah. <laughs> lots lots of people in this space where are trying to make a difference. So I, I greatly applaud that, and I, I can't wait to see uh, where that takes off, where that goes. And I definitely have to, like you said, you have some some episodes out there, or is it just between you and your your crew right now? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's two. Well. It, it's like one episode right now, okay. but uh, we did record another one. We're just waiting for that to to finish, uh, finalize uh, publishing right now. Gotcha. But um, but yeah, it's like two uh, beta episodes. But uh, but now we're working on having like uh, guests and you know re really get us going. So, but yeah, we're we're ready to we're ready to go. Okay, yeah, I, I need a link to that too, so I put that on here as well. Uh, if it's Absolutely. out there for public consumption, right? Um, I, again, it's one of those things like if you don't start, you'll never finish. Uh, I don't think podcasts ever finish, right? <laughs> I think about like episode 500 now. Like I always lose, yeah, lose count. Man. It just keeps going, right? Um, but no, that, that's a great initiative. And I, I like that you're you're trying to uh, uh, inspire people, right? I, I think a lot of what we do just by being in the space is inspirational, whether uh, you you want to or not, right? It's like the uh, the Charles Barkley. I'm not a uh, I'm not a role model. Well, right, right. If you're in this space <laughs> doing right. what we do, you automatically if you show it to a convention or you go to a school, you are a role model. Uh, so you know you just have to spread the word in in that regard. Um, it's funny you brought that up now. Uh, I want to say later this week. Yeah, later this week, I'll be going to my my youngest, uh, to his school, third graders, right, to do a, like a 10-minute presentation on cybersecurity. Like, what do I do? Nice. And then it's what can I give the kids, right? So it's going to be internet safety, most likely, because I think that's a little bit easier to, more palatable for that that age group. Right. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, to some, inspire some kid, you know, like, okay, I don't know what I want to be, but that seems kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I'll put that on my list, right? Uh, and see what the future holds. Um, but no, I, that, that's great. So uh, we we talked about, again, the background, the inspiration, the experience, uh, kind of what you do now. Uh, and uh, obviously we'll have links so people can find you uh, to ask you more of those questions. Again, yeah, your your title, uh, not, not only your, your, your skill and your experience, but yes, your title as well. I can see that definitely people, you know, hitting the, uh, the connect button to, to, to reach out oh, yeah. to like, hey, how do <laughs> what inspires you to get there? And then how can I get there as well? Right. Uh, but I, I think you having that diverse experience also uh, will speak well to a lot of people who are trying to break in right now. Um, I, I went to a convention down in Tampa 
Uh, it was the Cyber Tepa X. I was invited to uh, to be on a panel. Greatly appreciate the uh, the team from Paragon, uh, Computer Coach. Um, you know, I'm, I know I'm, I'm forgetting some of the, the sponsors that put it together, but great team, uh, great people. But yeah, right nice. after right after the panel, you know, there, there's a, a line for different people had you know different pockets, so to speak, right? Like I'm this type of cyber professional, I'm that type of cyber professional, uh, and then I had what I noticed on my side being people who look like us who want to right. break into it as well as people who wanted to transition. Right. Cause I, you know, I talked a little bit about my military transition and now what I do. So you have people who are like, how do I, you know, uh, get there. Um, and it's, it's good to see that and for people to feel comfortable to, to come up and ask those questions. Right. So I, I know your podcast is going to take off. People, people are going to love it. Um, and then you have a, a great, you have a great podcast voice. So, oh. right. <laughs> Thanks. So you're, you're good Thank on that, you. on that, that front as well. Right. <laughs> So you, you should be uh, good to go. Will it be in video as well, or will it all be audio? Yep. No, I'll, I'll tell you, man. I'm very intentional. I'm putting my face out okay. there. There yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised with a thumbnail change to do for you, man. Like, uh, yeah. so a little bit be behind, uh, I guess, insider, uh, right? Because you're your fellow podcaster. Uh, people's faces. If they see your face, they're more likely to click on it. I didn't learn mm. that for almost 300 episodes. So. Right, because <laughs> I was I was being stubborn. I was like, I don't want to put my face on it. Like they'll click the thing because the article seems interesting, and then they'll get to me. As soon as I made the switch, it tripled clicks. Made it, made it just difference. just by putting your face on it. Yeah, like, it's great. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, be, I, I believe it. I mean, I mean, for me, you know, I'm a I'm a big podcaster, and I think that's why I'm so excited to to actually do this to to be a cre creator, a podcast creator, uh, because I. I'm always having my headphones in my ears. Like if I'm going on a walk or I'm, you know, I'm at the gym, you know, headphones in my ears. So um, I think that's part of that psychology, um, yeah. you know, that, that kind of introduces itself there too, because especially as it pertains to cyber, I do, sometimes I do want to see the, the black content creators um, and, and maybe just different, not even, not even just cyber, like any genre of sports, or, you know, whatever the case is. Right. A lot of times I will try and lean and see where the black creators are. And I look for them. If I see, like I say, if I see that face, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm more off, more likely to click and um, give it a listen. So now, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, keep showing your face. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's funny that you bring that up. So I don't know if you've looked into black speakers network. So the Black Speakers oh. Network, I uh, I went on there uh, in the past. I'm trying to look up their information real quick to make sure I don't speak out of pocket. So Black Speakers Speakers Network, and I'm not, I believe his name is Brian, the uh, the guy who's in charge of it. But uh, you go on there, and then basically you being a content creator uh, with a podcast, you're able to uh, then advertise to people who want to be on podcasts, right? So uh, professionals who are people of color who are either uh, they're, they're trying to um, be public speakers or they're already authors and they're trying to share their products or it's a multitude of things. So his name is Brian J. Olds. Uh, he's out of Baltimore, uh, Maryland. And okay. basically uh, he puts a spotlight on you in a, a like a Zoom-like session. You speak your piece like this is what my podcast is for, this is when we publish. Um, this is the type of content and the type of people I'm looking to have on my, my podcast. And then uh, basically broadcasts it out to people who are looking to be on podcasts. Uh, again, people of color uh, are, are really the uh, target audience. And then you make connections from there. So I, I think that would bode well for you uh, as well if you're looking for people to, to be on the podcast. And he does it like once a month, I want to say, or so often. And I have not gone back yet because I was in the middle of transition the first time yeah. I was on there. But I want to get back in there because I, I was able to have smile on the uh, the show, talk about his book, talk about his his uh, nice. his background as well. So it doesn't have to necessarily be cyber, but obviously yeah. that's the, that's the focus of, of of my podcast, right? But uh, this person was really good at the the hiring process, the transitioning process. So I was like, you know, I think that would be great to have uh, you on the podcast as well because there's a lot of people who are just trying to figure out like how do I make it past the ATS system, right? Like I, right. I've I either I'm in the process of getting the certs or have the education or I have a little bit of experience, but I can't get to a person to have an interview. So I, I think a lot of good information came out there. But again, I, I I don't believe, like I know a lot of people of color who are in HR space, but I don't see a lot of them on platforms kind of discussing like what it takes to get 
to a person because once you get there right you can speak your piece as opposed to shouting at a robot who may or may not you know screen you just because of some keywords are missing so right exactly but yeah i I would say definitely check that out if if that's what you're you're uh you're kind of interested in uh as well um and that that goes for anybody who's who's currently listening right so i know there's a lot of uh content creators i i I, being humble right there's at least two or three uh, content creators that listen (laughs) hopefully more i'm not just talking to a vacuum but uh yeah check it out I, i think brian does a really good job and uh uh, it, it just it, it's the synergy right like you might find somebody who also has a platform and then you guys can can right. cross over um so uh, again that's the the reason for um the the network the um the 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 reason that we're reaching out to each other to do you know the, these type of things is to build that synergy and to kind of strengthen all of our platforms so I, I think it's a great great uh initiative I think you have a lot of great stuff happening and I want to advertise all of it so <laughs> Uh, definitely give me all those links i'll put it on there right because it we're it, we're only going to get stronger if we work together um and right. I, I see i see nothing but positivity coming out of linkedin uh and and even twitter or whatever it's called now x uh so x, to speak so the black C, tech pipeline H. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like they, they have a lot of great stuff happening as well uh blacks and cybersecurity. i i, I yes. add them on all my stuff as well yeah. um there's a lot of different organizations, uh, WESIS, that um, yeah. uh, can only, they, they have their own pockets, right? They have their own focal points who they're looking uh, to to speak to, but that doesn't deter us from contacting them and, and trying to get this energy going because, uh, you know, the rising tide floats all ships or however the saying goes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, you were right. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. But no, that, so that's awesome. So uh what I like to do uh, near the end of the, the podcast is to to kind of strip a little, strip away a little bit of the career stuff, right? Because we're we're all people at the end of the day. Like this right. is our passion. This is what we we look to do, right? Even on my off time, I'm doing cybersecurity stuff. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. what else are you doing, right? Uh, so, uh, what do you do to unwind, right? Like movies, books, games, all that stuff that we talk about on Fridays on our show. Uh, it's not so related like what do you do to uh to to relax yeah man i'm uh i'm glad you asked that i'm a i'm a big marvel head uh i love marvel movies um, there it is. I, you know what the follow-up is gonna be like s- s- speak your piece <laughs> <laughs> jerry you know the follow-up <laughs> yeah I, yeah um i actually i just i just watched the last episode of uh loki okay. last night and that was good um and those who haven't watched it yet, uh, well, I won't say anything. I don't want to spoil it. Right, but, uh, right. But I, I, I really liked it. Like yeah, me and Shannon I, I, are I, are opposite on it, though. Like you'll you'll hear on this this upcoming uh, week's week show. He didn't hate it, but he was. Yeah. It wasn't a tearjerker for him. <laughs> well, what well, I mean, it, it made you uh, you you, you were balling or no? Nah, I lost my tear ducts in the war. But if I had them, <laughs> I would have felt some kind of way. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's a lot of time we spent with the character, right? Like out of yeah. all of the MCU characters, like Loki has made it to 14 years, I want to say. Yeah. I, it, it, you know, it's crazy because when you put it in perspective, because they said, I was reading an article and yeah, when Loki first started, well, Tom Hiddleston, when he started the character Loki, yeah. he was like 29. That's like crazy. Now, yeah. yeah. And like now he's like 40 <laughs> something. So I'm like, yo, I can't believe it was that long. Um, yeah. but he, yeah, he's like one of the, probably one of the last, uh, from the original, because, you know, we do, we did lose some characters along the way, but, yeah. um, um, uh, cause I don't, I don't even know if Thor or Chris Hemsworth is going to do another Thor or not. But, right. I think, uh, I think he will. I, but yeah, he had that, that health concern shock, right. The kind of, yeah made him made him slow down but he still did the extraction too so i'm like yeah you come back do yeah this. and the extraction <laughs> too is definitely more uh <laughs> he's getting beat up a lot in that right. um but no uh but no yeah yeah, yeah he, he is one of the few i i and i'll put samuel jackson as doing uh oh yeah nick fury but um yeah it it, it is it is almost like bittersweet because you are starting to see the end of that that era i guess right. that yeah i guess like first who, class who right? started yeah who yeah. really got it going um 
so I, you know, these characters that they're, they're human, they're still human like us, man. They do age and want to move on to other projects too. Sometimes it's just simple as that too. I mean, they don't want to stay too long in a role and not, right. you know, go for other roles. But um, but no, yeah, it it, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, like yeah. I said, I I am interested us to see what the next phase of Marvel is gonna be. Um, but yeah, I I do yeah. So with that, yeah, I do like Marvel movies, shows. Uh, books I, i'm you know what, what when it's not a net plus or cisp or you know I, i'm not right. when i'm not reading a cyber book i do like to do some leisure reading uh, i'm currently reading um a stephen a smith's book uh straight shooter which okay. is very good by the way um another book i'm reading oh uh, dr eric thomas's book uh uou that's a that's a good okay. book he he honestly yeah when i when i was studying for my doctorate he he was like my virtual coach man because I, I would watch his videos on youtube his motivational videos listen to his you know um well listen to him on spotify it, he didn't necessarily have a podcast but he had it he had the recordings on you know that you could consume on on spotify right. and other platforms but um i even put him as a um as a mention in my in my dissertation because he made that much of an impact for me because i mean there were times man like i would sit in a corner and ball up and cry because like oh man i don't know if i'm gonna finish this thing but um de definitely went through a lot of highs and lows th throughout the uh the doctor process and you know i was just listening to to his motivation uh like i said his motivational videos was you know really helped me so but yeah i'm reading reading his book um a, a couple of others i mean i i have I, I know a lot of people will, or maybe a lot of guys will have like the uh the man cave for me it, I, my, my favorite part of the house is the uh the bookshelf okay. so I, I love i love the i love my books um i barely even play i barely even play video games i used to love video games and not that not that i hate them now i just i, I think it's just prioritize the time and for me it's just hard for me to get get involved with uh right. with the games. I mean, unless like my like so like when my sons play, then you know I probably play a little more. But outside of that, it doesn't get turned on. <laughs> but right. but um, no, no, I hear that. Like so, that may come back. Like uh, I, I don't know how passionate you were before, because uh, you you've been in you've been studying and doing school and all that other stuff, yeah. uh, important stuff for a while now. Um, it took me a few years. Like I, I stopped at my my master's, right? It says P, P and P, all that good stuff. But from that entire process, I kind of lost the passion for games because, like you said, they're time consuming, right? I don't have 20, 30 hours to put right. into this hobby because I feel bad. And so I pick up the controller, I'm like, I could be studying. I could have the Sys P book open or something. That's exactly that. So oh, feel, just, yeah. just now, I'm starting to get back into them. It's been years. Uh, what, I finally, what, what, what are you playing? Uh, Spider Man 2. I just finished it. It's, oh wait all right the platform that, that's the question what what platform are you on oh so I, I got them all man but right now i'm focused on ps5 so i'm playing Spider -Man okay 2. yeah on the ps that makes a difference <laughs> but I, I like so right now i'm in i'm in the, the office uh, which i still have to get soundproof that's why i got the, the headphones on instead of my mic because it's super echoey in here but uh the P, pc is right here right it's good enough to play pretty much anything uh, mm. just not on the highest of settings, right? I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not buying a eighteen hundred dollar uh, video card. It's not gonna happen. Right. But um, then the TV's over here with the the Xbox, the Switch, the VR headset that no one plays with. Is, oh man! <laughs> I was so happy that we got it for Christmas. Uh, from my my wife uh, won it at a, a holiday party because I had a, if I had bought that, I'd been real mad right now because oh, yeah. they spent like maybe an hour a month playing with it. <laughs> Yeah, but then the, the PS5 is in the living room right now because I'm playing Spider Man, so it'll get switched out uh, once once I get done with that. But nice. uh, I had all these things and I didn't play for years, um, and it, it's because I did feel guilty, right? If I picked up something that wasn't study material, mm -hmm. I'd feel bad, right? Because then it's like, well, I have to give up something. Either I'm giving up more time with my family to play these games, or I'm giving up more study material. I, I'm hungry. I need I need to consume as much of this as possible, right? Right. Um, but just now, I, I would say this 
the end of this year. So it's been like three or four years, five years. It's been five years, yeah. Um, I finally started to like, okay, I want to sit down and give myself an hour of, you know, turning my brain off. I'm I'm Spider Man for the next hour. So it right. may come back. It may come back. But I don't know. Like you you're school <laughs> took many more years than what I did. So it might take a little bit further down the future for you. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I'd be just like maybe the just a more casual gamer. Like I'm not I, I don't know. I don't think I'll be back to like the like I said play all night i definitely can't do that right, right. That, that's and, and, and we're old too so <laughs> yeah man, yeah, yeah that, that's what i'm saying like i was like that that you could count me out for that but uh but yeah i may be just like a little casual or if like if there's people over or you know some sort of like group setting maybe but um gotcha. but at the same time i don't feel like i'm missing anything either like I'm yeah okay. that's very true yeah you, you get a different perspective right um especially yeah. when you have a, a passion and a pursuit uh some things just fall off you know, falls to the wayside. Um, so got to go back to Marvel real quick. So you watched Loki 2. Uh, again, we didn't give anything away. I don't know. I, I meant to say no spoilers, but we didn't spoil anything, right? right? We didn't say the fate of Loki or what have you. Just saying that the season two is over, uh, which everyone should know because this was a season two finale. Right. Um, have you watched the Marvels and do you plan on watching it in theaters? I, I have not watched the Marvels yet, but I, I do plan on to okay. see it i mean i, I saw it, I, I saw it I, yesterday I have to. you saw yeah. it i saw it uh, yesterday what you thought i thought it was good uh, again like so now because continuity is off between uh the the episodes with me and shannon and now this this podcast so you'll hear this after that but yeah. you're not you're hearing this before you hear the me and shannon's discussion i think marvel is in a place where they were just too good too fast. Like, well, not, it wasn't even fast. Like, just that decade of Marvel movies is hard to compete now. So, like, the Marvels was good. I had no passion or drive to go see it. Uh, and I feel that way about a lot of the bigger movies. I, like, I can just wait till they come home. Um, mm-hmm. not, because I, I, not because I dislike Marvel. It's just, like, you built up for 10 years to get to this point where the snap happens and all that other crazy stuff. And now you have to... It's, going to be another decade to get to wherever they're going from here on out and i just don't have as much passion to be in a room full of people <laughs> to see it when i it's going to come home i i i believe the i think where i think marvel is starting to lose a bit of esteem is their their big players are gone or right. or going away like but I mean, if you if you remember when they when they first had the first Avengers movie, like putting them all on the big screen, yeah, you know, Hulk, Black Widow, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, like all of them together, Hawkeye. I mean, that was that was a big deal then. Yeah. But like, yeah, of course, there's time going on with the storyline, you know, and and of course we 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 did lose Chadwick, rest in peace. Um, we did have big characters we did loot we lost big characters that made up the the pillars i'd say of marvel so yeah. when they started loot we started losing them and then you're trying to replace it with these characters you're not you're not really all that familiar with or maybe you didn't really care for it. like eh, maybe, right. maybe i'll see it or maybe i'll just and wait it, for it to come out and I, I i like i was telling shannon i think we're a little spoiled too like we asked for this right we asked for like the the disney plus uh, series mm-hmm. costs almost as much as a movie to make. Like it's it's not low budget. It's not like the CW doing the Arrowverse or something like that, right? Where it's just like this is good enough for TV. Like right. these these characters leaping right off of the small screen to the big screen with no huge transition. Like I, I don't know if you you saw when you were a kid, but like the Power Rangers TV show to the Power Rangers movie, there's a yeah. huge there's a huge oh. delta between those two things. Yeah, that's not the same golf between the tv shows that disney plus is making and their movies they, but it's just not i don't i don't know it's they, i don't want to say it's fatigue but it's just like i don't care as much as i did 10 years ago i i, I think they, they're gonna kind of fall into the trap that dc fell into where like with dc movies um where it's starting to lose that continuity right and and i think marvel is starting to get that way because and even some of the shows like um, some of them just honestly just weren't that great. Uh, and Haw- like the Hawkeye series was, uh, 
right. I liked Hawkeye. Okay. I, I did like Hawkeye, but I didn't like Moon Knight, which is crazy to me. I thought I thought really? it did the opposite. Because no, I love Moon Knight. I love Moon Knight. It, it was okay. It just it felt like I don't know. Like that could have been just an origin movie as opposed to the the show. It felt like they drug it out. It just felt like they just kept pulling it for too long. Like the the Oscar Isaacs is an awesome actor. Yeah, he act, is. act his butt yeah. off. Um, but I don't know. I just didn't fall in love with the character like I thought I would. Um, wow. I think he should have been a movie. And and that and uh, I think that the slow burn with Loki that that is definitely a good TV series, right? I don't right. think that should be a movie. I think that should be twelve episodes. You know, season one to season two. Right. Uh, like slow burn, like build up all the stuff behind the scenes. But Moon Knight. We could do that in an hour and a half. <laughs> that would have been a okay. <laughs> wow, man! Yeah. Um, Unpopular opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, man. But we'll see what the future holds, though. Like uh, again, like I, I, th- I think there's still, I think there's still hope. Like if you watch the Marvels, uh, whenever you do watch it, it's 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 definitely an eight, and nothing's wrong with the eight. It's just that we're so used to all these tens. It's like yeah. well. You know, anything less than a 10 is just not good. Like, no, this is like, if we were, when we were kids, like, we would have mm. killed for a Marvel's movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Kill him? Kidding me? Yeah. But now we spent, <laughs> you spent 10 years watching, you know, crazy Iron Man and, and Thanos and all the big battles. And now we're just like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> Give me something new. <laughs> yeah. And I, it's going to be tough. I think that puts a lot of pressure on the new, you know, generation of characters from Marvel because yeah, they, they're going to try to, meet that very high standard kind of, kind of hard stuff they try to bring back iron man like yo iron man died what are you talking about right the, the, well, i mean like de- death doesn't really mean much in the comics right like i mean i mean yeah it won't be it the, won't be iron man but it'll be right. an iron Cause, man <laughs> cause when they yeah because when, when they started the multiverse stuff yeah they, they're gonna start recycling people now yeah I, I think so but but again like uh uh for anybody who uh it was like I didn't want to see the Marvels just because I was like, man, it's gonna be a, a six or a seven. I can wait. I watched it. And I was like, you know, that was a good time. Like, mm-hmm. um, I appreciate the level of continuity, level of energy that they're putting into these things. So I feel like I have to support. And I, uh, I, I don't believe uh, we're gonna keep getting uh, eights. I think they're gonna start slowing down because they want everything to be a ten. So it's unfortunate. But like next year, you see, it's only gonna be a Deadpool movie. Like usually, it's either two or three Marvel movies. It's only gonna be one next year, and then all the yeah. 2025 stuff is starting to move around. So I think they're gonna start to kind of slow some of these pro- some of these projects down and retool them because they want tens all the time, um, which is a good thing. But I feel bad because I feel like I'm the problem. <laughs> like I'm causing this to be a, be the problem. Right. Oh. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's just. It's just the way, you know, like like, like I said, it, it, I'm just very interested to see like what they do and try to reinvigorate or kind of restart the uh, get get things going again for Marvel because, like I said, it, it's a very high standard with with the with the big characters that were lost, yeah. so it's gonna be hard to replace them. No, yeah, that is very true. So we'll we'll see what the what the future holds, though. Like, I'm still gonna support. I just again, like, especially after COVID, I just don't go to the theater unless it's like I know it's gonna be a blockbuster. Yeah. Um, but then I the opportunity popped up, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll take Junior to go see it. It wasn't bad. So anybody right. who's trying to hold out, it's not. It's definitely not a bad movie. It's it's an eight, um, which is pretty good actually. Um, okay, and then my my last question for you, because um, I, I don't want to hold you all night. So you're from Mount Vernon, uh, New York. So do so, you have it? You have an NFL team. NFL team, yeah. yeah. Um, so because I'm, I'm from I'm, Buffalo, I'm, New York. So. Oh, Buffalo. <laughs> I'm I'm almost I'm almost embarrassed to say, but uh, especially the way we played uh, last night. Um, but you know, it's the Giants, New York Giants. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm not I'm not going to take any cheap shots at you. I. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what has happened to the Cowboys recently. Like my best friend, he's also from Buffalo. He's a Cowboys uh-huh. fan. Been been a Cowboys fan his entire life. Like right. so from the time I can remember him, he had the starter jacket with the Cowboys uh, star on it. I'm just like, we're from Buffalo. What are you doing? Right. Um, but yeah, big fan. They I don't know what's happening, but Dak Dak Prescott shouldn't. He he looked elite last night. I didn't like it. <laughs> but, but I didn't like the, it. But but I, don't, a, but I don't think it was your fault. I don't. I really don't. 
<laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what's happening with him. Like the Bills are falling off. The Cowboys are for some reason taking off. I don't understand the season. Wait, but you see, it's you know, whenever Cowboys play a a real top tier team, you know, Dak is kind of holding. Yeah, <laughs> what was that Philly when he played Philly? Yeah, Philly. I think the Niners too. Like, yeah, yeah when they're playing like top, you know, top tier teams or teams that can match them better, they they don't play that great. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, but you know, they play a team like my Giants. You know, they drop. 40, 50 points on us. So, but, but it's, it's, it's like, been a it's weird like, season. It's like practice. It's like practice to them, you know? It's, it's been a real <laughs> weird season because, like, we we lost to the Jets out the, out the gate, right? Like, uh, Aaron Rodgers Y'all, had four, yeah. four snaps. And then we, yeah. we got we got the beatdown. I'm just like, what happened? Right. Like, what is going on this season? It's just been that a weird was, the entire that season. That was a crazy game. Like, yeah. a lot of stuff happened in that game. Yeah, it's been it's what? been pretty wild. So, I won't, I won't get you for that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> like you, you guys are in the process of building. Like the bills need to do something. Like we need to. Somebody's got to. Somebody's got to get let go next year. <laughs> well, you guys play. You guys play tonight. Actually, we do. We play the play the Broncos shortly. So yeah. I can't. I'm I'm excited. I, but man, listen. <laughs> it. I feel confident, but I felt confident in the past couple of games, and we, right. we've we've been we've been all over the place. But uh, I say all that to say. Uh, Let's see what happens. But yeah, it's always I always interesting when I talk to people from New York, like depending on which which side of New York you're on, right? West New York, obviously we're up the Bills. Um, yeah. but then as you get closer to the city, you got Jets versus Giants, all that good stuff. So right, right. <laughs> gotcha. But no, it's it's definitely been a pleasure speaking to you. I, I I greatly appreciate you reaching out to to make this connection. Hopefully we get to do this again. Absolutely, um, man. Uh, again, I, I'm looking forward to all of your projects, right? I can't wait to, to hear your podcast. We'll definitely share it with our audience uh, as well. I can't wait uh, to, you know... We need, uh, we need to do like a Marvel-esque like crossover. Like <laughs> crossover? <your> team, <laughs> me and our friends, so we all you know, just a joint, one big joint podcast. Yeah, yeah, I'd be down for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you you let me know. We'll, we'll work it out. I'm on the East Coast, right? I think you, yeah, yeah you're on the East Coast yeah, I'm as well. I'm on East Coast, yeah. It's just, just Shannon out there, out there in yeah. uh, Colorado's, uh, uh, what is that? Is that mountain time? Is that yeah, that's time? mountain time. It's mountain time, right? Mountain time. So, Colorado? Right yeah, and then uh, Navon's even further, like Navon's uh, West Coast. So, wow, he's yeah. on that, that Pacific time. Yeah. Like they, they mess everything up. They mess up the Super Bowl. They mess up the championship, right? Like, they mess everything up. Can't Man. mess with the people. <laughs> well, no, again, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to share all the links with the uh, audience. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what the future holds. And I, I would love to do the uh, the collabo, but regardless, definitely have to have you back on here uh, just to, to see, you know, where you're at, what you're doing, and then any new initiatives you may have. Because I, I feel as though you're going to have a few more, right? Like, your, your yeah. 50 meter targets are, are uh, pretty good. So I, I, I can't wait to, you know, see the, the progression and see where you go from there. So, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So for all those listening, please uh, tune in to all the links I'm going to share uh, from, uh, from Dr. Joseph J. Burt Miller Jr. Uh, and all of the projects that he's currently doing. Then uh, definitely hit us up. I always forget to say at the beginning and the middle. So hopefully you stay to the end. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Hit a button. Uh, if there's a, a button or a bell involved in the platform of choice, uh, definitely share us with your nerdy friends, right? We're trying to grow. If you're into uh, marketing or something like that and you have anything you want to talk to me about, perhaps uh, we can do that as well. I'm looking for people who can share with our audience things that help us to break into cyber, to grow into cyber, to upskill, uh, and, you know, a, a hand up. I'm not trying to advertise uh, foot deodorant and boxes, right? This is not what the platform is here for. So miss me with that, please. Uh, yeah. But then definitely reach out if you're here to support people of color trying to break into cybersecurity. Um, hit us up with the platforms that all go by our name or you can hit me up personally. I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. Stay safe. Stay secure.